In today's episode of Speaking Our Peace, we're exploring the power of fasting. Giving up food or something that we like for a period of time is not a common practice among activists in North America, even though it has a long tradition in other cultures like India. In this episode, we listen to stories from five different people talking about their experiences participating in the Relay Fast in Canada and the US, organized as an act of solidarity for the Jai Chikat marchers. The Relay Fast started on September 21st, 2020, the International Day for Peace, and ended 12 days later on October 2nd, the birth anniversary of Muhammad Gandhi and the International Day of Nonviolence. First, we'll hear from Reva giving us some background on the Relay Fast, and then we'll hear from Maggie Shane from Edmonton, Alberta, myself, Andy Luck from Toronto, Ontario, Shauna Coomer from Los Angeles, California, and Priya Joshi from Seattle, Washington. Well, the Relay Fast uh, was an idea that I heard about uh, from a group in India. Um, it was a group called Save Our Farmers. Uh, or actually, the I should say that the fast was called Save Our Farmers. Uh, the group was the Gandhian uh, India Collective. And um, it was just a, a group of people from across India who decided that they were gonna fast for 150 days um, for uh, to bring attention to the plight of the poor, basically, uh, in, in India. And so uh, every day, a different person, um, a prominent Gandhian was fasting and they had uh, a, a website or um, Facebook page where they would post a little bit about the person and, and a photograph of them in their fast. And so I thought, wouldn't that be a great thing to do? Because it, it felt like it was a form of action that we could take in isolation and yet be together. And so I, um, I thought, well, we're never going to be able to do 150 days here, but I could see us doing 12 days. And uh, we, we always try through the Mahatma Gandhi Foundation uh, in Edmonton, what we always try to do is have something going from September 21st, which is the International Day uh, for Peace, until October 2nd, which of course is Gandhiji's uh, birth anniversary and also the International Day for Nonviolence. And so that seemed to be the, the right time period to, to take on the relay fast. Um, as it turned out, uh, the Jai Jagat team uh, had been asked to be involved in a global fast on September 21st for, uh, uh, for peace. And so, uh, wanted us to get as many people as possible involved in that. So we just decided what we would do is on, on September 21st, we'd uh, ask everybody to fast and then we would start the, uh, and we would still include that in our relay fast, but um, but that, that we would start with the individual fasting on September 22nd. I think it was important in North America because it's not a thing that we do that often. We've, we've heard about it. And I think people respond to it when they hear about it. Um, you know, it, it's uh, often called a hunger strike. And, and I think there's a, very, uh, there's a real difference between the, what those two terms uh, evoke. Um, but usually, you know, it's a form of protest and, uh, and, and you hear people uh, take this on in order to protest something very specific. And I thought, you know, part of the tradition in India around fasting is its reflection. It's not just about protesting something, but it's about reflection on your own self and your surroundings and what can you do. Um, and so I thought if we had uh, a group of people who were taking up whatever aspect of peace and justice they wanted to take up and to fast for it in a, a very um, deliberate kind of way that that would bring attention to a range of issues in North America that need to be addressed. Plus that would give that individual an opportunity to voice some of the concerns that they have 
in the area. So what I did was I put together a, a list of people, uh, people that I know, uh, a few through uh, OISE, but mostly uh, people that I know uh, through the Gandhian circles in one way or another. As I put out the call, uh, not only did everybody say yes, but I had, I because I wasn't sure how many I was going to get. I had said in the in the original invitation, if you know anybody else who might be interested, please let them know. So not only did everybody say yes, but other people uh, contacted me. So we ended up having, I believe, 18 people who fasted, and um, it was really quite amazing. Um, First, that, that everybody was so enthusiastic about it. Um, and what I found out was that several people had already done fasts for one reason or another. And they really liked that idea of doing a fast. Other people had never done one, um, but they kind of went, sure, I can take that on. I'm here to talk today to talk about why I'm an undertaking a fast, which is not something that I've, I've ever done before. So I'm, I'm new to this type of, of activism, to this type of um, uh, personal engagement. And I'm my cause that I'm passionate about is the advancement of public education. Now, we're all um, we're all advocates for education. Um, I chose public education particularly and for the advancement of public education systems around the world uh, because the, that institution is under threat wherever it happens to be and it's certainly under threat here in Alberta um, and in the United States and in other areas of the world where it hasn't taken hold. But public education is the institution that raises uh, raises the the floor for everyone, and uh, I'm as I'm my day job and my other life. I work for the Alberta Teachers Association. Uh, teachers are amazing as a group. They are always pulling rabbits out of their hats and keeping all the plates spinning. And uh, I could never be one, uh, but I, it's a privilege to work for them. So I see the effects of public education every day. I see dedicated professionals and paraprofessionals and parents and stakeholders working diligently to preserve that institution with great gusto and great passion and it's sometimes considerable personal sacrifice. So I am uh, fasting for that reason. Public education is the, as I said, is the plain, it levels the playing field. It, it provides um, communities with um, community members who are able to critically think, to think creatively, to act collectively, to uh, work towards the betterment of all, to um, overcome uh, poverty, to uh, create, create opportunities for human potential to thrive. And where that happens, we, I think we find that the, um, the, the goals of justice and and peace or concomitant with that when you are um, educated in a way that uh, helps you see the potential then hungry for it and you are uh, willing to pursue that and, and you're I think intolerant of continued poverty and continued injustice and so I says intimately connect foundational foundational institution for achieving those goals uh, personally and in the community. Sometimes when I read or I encounter Gandhiji's words, they stay on the page. Um, they're beautiful, they resonate, but they stay on the page. And when I'm confronted with commitment, uh, such as the marchers in Jai Jagat are undertaking, I, I see it in action and it's walking around and it's shaking the world in a gentle way. And uh, I am reminded of the practical, real world uh, power of these principles. And so I'm tremendously grateful and inspired by them. Thank you. So I fasted for um, 
fair and just education for ad adult learners as opposed to children in public education. Um, and I mean, I am humbled every single day um, working with these students and learners to think that um, I very much have taken education for granted because schooling has never been terribly difficult for me. Um, and I think that's kind of related to my experience fasting yesterday. It's also the first time that I do anything like this. Um, I was just trying to get my mind off of meals and food most of the time. It's a very personal experience, but at the same time, I realized that, you know, the, the, the fact that I chose to fast and that there's a choice in terms of you know, every day I choose what to eat, not so much that I need to choose if I eat or pay rent. Um, you know, real choices, and even when it comes to, you know, adult education, there are so many things that I've chosen to do because I have the privilege to do it. Um, because I have, you know, worked through formal schooling and then that opens up so many choices. And so I think the fast kind of made me think a lot on my personal level that um and the choices that i have um are just i've never felt limited um so, so i'm hoping <laughs> that insight um it's something that i could take into the teaching that i do with different students um the research that i I do um, in the field for adult literacy and just also different community organizations working with people who are just, you know, fighting or working through their vulnerabilities and just marginalization on a day to day basis. So that's my, I don't know if I do it again because I really do like my food. Um, but I mean, it, I, I have to admit that the insight um, was rather unexpected because I didn't really know what to expect. <laughs> you know, some of us doing the fast, we're doing it by ourselves, especially in this kind of quarantine isolation environment. It feels very, very alone, but in no ways are we actually by ourselves. We, I think I personally draw a lot of strength out of knowing that there are people marching and also there are other people fasting um but it's it's but still you know individual actions add up together so i also know that i shouldn't get too comfortable just knowing that other people are doing their thing that i don't have to do anything so there's a kind of an interesting balance between um individual and collective actions Hello everyone, Shauna Kumar here. <laughs> I'm speaking uh, from the unceded lands of the Tongva people in um, the San, San Gabrielino Mountains, um, which is in Los Angeles. I, I think that I need to bring more mindfulness to my eating again. Um, I'm thinking about today about food as a gift from the earth, as a incredible resource and um, how much hard work goes into bringing food to me you know and I I can easily go to a grocery store and and pick things up and and not think about where my food comes from um, so one of the things that that fasting does for me is to redraw my attention to um, the way that food reaches me and the many lives that are that are responsible um, for you know for growing food for harvesting it bringing it to a place where I can can um, receive it and also the violence that sometimes goes into um, the way that food is produced so I um I just want to honor the the hard work and the people whose lives are touched by by food that I eat and um, you know beverages that I drink and uh, 
I also, it brings attention to me for the ways that all of our lives are interconnected and that we all, you know, we're all part of this one earth um, and it's all we have. So, so how can we honor it? I'm specifically also thinking about the violence um, that occurs towards women in particular as a woman, um, toward women, towards non-binary people, towards all, all people, but um, specifically thinking about women in, um, in the United States where I am right now, you know, there are, there are many things occurring. Um, there's a lot of institutionalized racism. Uh, there's history of colonization. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that devalues some bodies over others. And I recently heard about a, an alleged forced sterilization um, in an ICE facility, which is an immigration facility in Georgia. And it was, it was widely reported in the news. Um, and there's, there's an investigation on that right now. I also think about um, forced sterilization that has occurred in Canada, where I'm from, that um, certain laws haven't been changed across the country, only in British Columbia and in um, Alberta, I believe the laws were changed about uh, forced sterilization. I heard as recently as 2018 that there was a forced sterilization of an indigenous woman. And uh, so there, there are court cases going on about this. There are thing, these are things that are not often reported. And I myself even, you know, watch news, consume news, and I try to stay on top of things. But there are things that are forgotten because of the, the hierarchy of bodies and the way that people think of um, bodies in terms of this hierarchy of race. Thinking about also um, those people, you know, women in particular, um, indigenous, indigenous women that have disappeared in the United States and Canada. I'm also, you know, connecting, I'm, I'm very connected in my heart with, with people of different continents around the world. And so I'm not only thinking about North America, but um, I wanted to just start there where I am and, and branch out from there. And in fact, the food that I discussed at the very beginning, if I think about that very mindfully, you know, food or coffee or where, where is it coming from, right? So, so those um, links are being made for me today. And uh, it's very humbling. And I, I must say that I've, um, it's, it's emotional. So firstly, I think I wanted to participate in the fast because I wanted something active to do. Um, when I think about my connection to nonviolence and peace work, I think one of the main underlying focuses that I have is taking action and concrete action at that. Um, the Relay Fast as an opportunity, you know, was presented to me and I, I didn't know what it was, but I knew that there were going to be some really amazing people participating. And I knew that if they were doing it, it they must have some great reason. So the more I learned, um, the more I really did feel like it was something I wanted to be a part of. I also know that in my family, members of my family have done fasts before for spiritual or, or religious-based reasons. And while I, I do wish to connect 
with my spiritual self and I believe the fast could be part of that. I think it was really a combination of those things, of wanting to be part of something and take action, and also the spiritual aspect as well. I was fasting for the end of oppression, which is kind of an unwieldy or maybe lofty goal, uh, which I totally recognize and understand. I, I think that For me, I was looking for a way to connect with just the idea of oppression. And and I I feel like fasting is as much a way of of combating oppression as anything else could be. Um, And when I when I say oppression, I do mean in any any form, whether it's between humans, um, the way that the humans who live here, not all, but many, oppress the planet. Um, And the ways in which we oppress ourselves, whether through the internalizing of oppressive thought structures or um, things like patriarchy and supremacy, the way that they wrap themselves around our minds and cause internal oppression. But I also mean on a very physical level, the ways in which we oppress our bodies and don't listen to their needs. We don't think that they're worthy. We don't think of ourselves as worthy. I want to end all the (laughs) forms of oppression. Um, I don't know that I accomplished that in one day of fasting, Um, but it did feel like something I could do. One of the insights I gained was that I didn't know how doable a 24-hour fast could be until I started to do it. When you think of a 24-hour fast, it sounds hard. It sounds hungry. Um, But my experience, yeah, I mean, there were physical, I could feel hungry. But I never felt like I couldn't do it once I started. And that, to me, is kind of a healthy metaphor for some of this nonviolence work. It's not that it's without pain or, or um, difficulty. But once you begin, it's all very, it can, it can be doable. Um, another insight that I took away is that I I guess I didn't expect fasting to feel like doing something in such a concrete way. I know that it's important and has been used by different cultures throughout history, but I guess I didn't imagine it would feel so impactful on me. It's the kind of thing that going into it, I was excited to be a part of because I wanted to participate in something bigger than myself. But at the end of the 24 hours, as I was breaking my fast with the people that I see every day, I felt that it was something I would do again and I would do it for myself and do it without needing to have it be a part of something bigger because I could see the inherent value in it. I think probably the biggest highlight for me was taking that time to intentionally think about what I want in this world to change and spending that day in service of that change that was my takeaway
one of the uh, board members of the Gandhi Foundation who uh, asked to to join on to the fast uh, after he heard about it, he uh, said, fasting is a good thing. Fasting is is uh, an important way to get our message across. Uh, and uh, I thought that's simple and straightforward, and that's absolutely right. Um, you know, I, I I had put out the call before September 21st on my Facebook page to say we were going to be doing this, and anybody who wanted to join us could. And two people that I know who uh, uh, are on Facebook had decided that they would fast along with us. Now there could have been more, but there were two for certain that that did. Did. And um, just hearing back from them, even just, uh, you know, why they did, they chose to fast, uh, their reflections as they posted back on Facebook about, about doing the fast, thinking about uh, issues of, of peace and justice and uh, and the the privilege that we have and how we can use it, which was was really amazing. Um, one of the people who joined our our relay fast uh, got in touch with me and said that he had fasted on on he fasted on October second with us as the in the group fast with the um, Gandhians from across the country, but he had also fasted on September twenty first, and his son is currently in university. Um, somewhere in the United States. And he said he was really surprised at the end of the day on September 21st to get a message from his son saying, yeah, dad, I knew you were fasting, so I fasted with you. And, um, and then he fasted with him again on October 2nd. And uh, he said he was really looking forward to having some conversation with his son about that uh, because he, he hadn't uh, ever really thought that that would be something that his son would do. Um, Karen, Sarah, who talked to her daughter about this. And, you know, Rhea is uh, five years old and she came up with the topic, the, the reason that they were fasting. And Rhea, of course, didn't give up food, but uh, I had, um, as you know, in the note that I sent everybody said, you know, fasting can be a lot of different things. Um, and it basically is about giving up something um, for, for the day so that, that you kind of have that commitment to, to self-sacrifice, but also uh, that space to, to think. Um, and so Rhea gave up, I think it was, it was a game that she always plays or her iPad or something. She gave it up for the day. And you know, just that, that opportunity to start at that young age, thinking about larger social issues and how you as an individual can, um, can make a difference. And so, yeah, I think it was absolutely worthwhile and that um, it's absolutely worth doing again next year. Um, I still have everybody's statements and, and when I get a moment, <laughs> what I'd like to do is post them all on the Gandhi website so that everybody um, has a, a, a record of them because um, they were so beautiful. People wrote with such passion about uh, the issues that they were uh, engaging with. And, and so I think there's some wonderful longer lasting effects of this. Um, and yeah, I'd love to, in, in a time when we can be together, um, I'd love to see if we could do something in um, in the group in India. Our friend Anish was was one of the people who fasted one of the days, and what he did was he had a group of people with him on the day that he fasted, and they spent the day reading um, uh, some of Gandhiji's work, and so they were all you know seated in a room on a on the floor um in this case all with their masks on but but um you know wouldn't it be great to have an opportunity when we can get back together again to have a bunch of people together uh doing something like that
Thanks for listening. Speaking Our Peace is produced by Annie Luck, Ashima Vishnoi, Priya Joshi, and Reva Joshi. You can be reached by email at speakingourpeace at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Our Peace Podcast. Or check out our website, speakingourpeace.com. Our music is made by Sun Bear. See you next time.